because he found a way to make everyone perfect. A way where no one would have to suffer anymore, a way where no one would be left behind and a path forward so that no one would be separated from God unwillingly again. But there's a problem. God's standards haven't changed. And here's what I mean. We're all messed up. Can I get an amen to that? Can I get a louder amen to that? Some of y'all like, amen, like I'm a little messed up, Josh. No, you ain't. You so screwed up, you can't see straight. You just don't know it, right? Like we all, I feel like everybody in this room, we all walk around with life with beer goggles on our face. Did you guys do that dare stuff where they put these goggles on and they supposed to scare you away from being drunk? As a kid, I remember thinking, this is fun. (laughs) Children, don't do it. Jesus says not to somewhere, I'm sure. Right, But we all walking around with blinders on because we don't want to see what's wrong in us, but we want to look at everybody else's trash. But we all messed up. We're all in the same boat. We are all imperfect, and we all fall short of that standard. In Romans 3.23, it says this, for all, not, not just Allison, for all, not just Brian, For all, not just Carolina fans. I saw like three people clap. Have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We talked about this briefly last week and the week before, and if you missed those sermons, I want to encourage you to go back and get the full scoop or story on them. You can find them on our app or online on our YouTube page, and if you haven't heard this before, then I want to give you a real brief summary, okay? So if you have questions, please come ask us after the sermon. We would love to help you along with this, but when God created the world, he created it perfect, Sin, death, pain, all those things, separation from him, were not a part of the plan. And one of the greatest gifts he gave us, this gift of free will, he gave us because he wanted us to be able to choose to love and to worship him. Instead, what we chose was to disobey him. And when we did that, we sinned. We went against the righteousness or the will of God. Sin entered into mankind, and God, who is perfect, cannot be in the presence of those who are imperfect. And so we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. We had to separate from God on a fundamental and spiritual level, but he did not abandon us. And when we sinned, we opened Pandora's box and death and pain and lying and cheating and murder and all those things that we deal with on a daily basis that were never meant to be here came here. But that wasn't the way God planned it. That was the way we made it. It was the way we made it. And so what God did is he, he hatched this plan. He came up with this, this idea where he said, I need a perfect sacrifice to cover over the many sins of my imperfect followers. God, who is perfect, said, I want to make others perfect like me because that is the bar we have to meet. We cannot come into the presence of God just as a good person. We cannot come into the presence of God just because we're sweet or we're empathetic or we're a good speaker or we have big muscles or we have wonderful hair. None of that matters to God. His bar is perfect. And in order to be in his presence, we have to be there, but we are not. We're not. It doesn't matter how far short of that bar we fall, we all fall short of that bar. Bar Every single one of us, which leaves us with a giant question, how does God correct this unright standing with him? How does God, who made the world perfect, but we broke it, take that and fix our relationship with him? Well, let's go back. Everybody loves to, to quote Romans 5, you know, 23, where it says, or 3.23, where it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, because we love pointing to all the other sinners except for ourselves. But let's look at what it says in verse 21. But now, apart from the law, 
It's referring to the Mosaic law, the Ten Commandments, the Levitical law, all those different things. There's about 600 and some laws in the Old Testament. And at this point with the Pharisees and Sadducees, there were many, 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 many other laws that they had placed. Think of it as almost like guardrails around the Mosaic and Levitical law, right? To keep them from sinning. So because we were so bad at sinning or so good at sinning, they said, let's give guardrails about 10 feet away from sinning. And then they, they said, well, we need more than 10 feet away. We need like 50 feet away. And so they kept making these rules and these laws. Apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. The righteousness of God is what? It's perfection. God is perfect. And so therefore what he says and what he does and who he is, is perfect. The righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This is what they were pointing us towards. In verse 22, this righteousness, this perfect righteousness, right, is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Now here's where it says, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. Jews or Jewish Gentiles or us, right? I'm kind of like a mutt. I have like German, like all sorts of different things in there, right? But that's us. We're, we're not Jewish. We're Gentiles. We're all those different things. That's us. No difference between Jews and Gentiles for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And listen to this in verse 24. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. The path to perfection is not found in possessions, but in a profession of faith. The path to perfection is not found in something I do, but someone that I place my hope and my trust in who has died on a cross and who rose from a grave and who ascended into heaven as the perfect sacrifice for me. The only way that we can come into the presence of God is to have the perfection of God clothe us. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ did when he came fully God, fully man, merged them together and lived a perfect life, died a perfect death for sins and crimes that he did not commit and then rose from the dead three days later and ascended into heaven. That is how we can be made right with God.